Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Cattlemen depend on the land for their livelihood. We'll share some outstanding environmental stewardship stories next. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. For more than 20 years, outstanding cattle ranching families have been honored with the Environmental Stewardship Award given by the National Cattlemen's Foundation and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and sponsored by Dow AgroSciences. This week, we're taking a look back at some of our favorite environmental stewardship stories from around the country. Let's have a look. Environmental stewardship, it's something every cattleman pays close attention to. And for 21 years, the Environmental Stewardship Award Program has recognized farms and ranches across the country for their outstanding commitment to preserving land and wildlife. Over the next several weeks, we'll be bringing you the stories from all seven of this year's regional winners. And this week, we begin our series with a Region 1 winner from Round Hill, Virginia. You'll find Glen Owen Farm at the foot of the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. The Thomas family has owned this operation for more than two centuries, and their cattle have been recognized by the American Angus Association as an historic herd. Glen Owen Farm was first started when they moved here from Pennsylvania in uh, 1784. Uh, it's been in the family ever since. We currently farm 800 acres. We have 275 cattle, uh, 120 uh, females, 20 bred heifers. Uh, principally, over time, we have sold registered Angus bulls to local commercial cattle producers in the three-state area. Glen Owen Farm sits just 60 miles from downtown Washington, D.C., so urban encroachment has become an issue. Several years ago, the Thomas family made a long-term commitment to preserve their farm by placing it in a permanent conservation easement, which forever protects the land from development. We're uh, in a beautiful part of the country, but a rapidly urbanizing part of the country. We're using a, a management strategy and a family ownership perpetuation process to ensure this farm remains a Thomas farm for many generations to come. What the conservation easements do first and foremost is they preserve the land base. So once you've got the land base conserved so that it isn't going to grow houses, then, um, then it opens up a lot of possibilities. With the conservation easement in place, the Thomas family then worked with the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service to develop a 10-year best management practices plan. One key aspect of the plan was to put in place systems to reduce the amount of runoff that enters ponds and streams. This included a nutrient management plan for the cropland, as well as installing over five miles of fencing to protect surface water from access by livestock. There are many environmental challenges in the uh, area that we operate in. The one that overshadows all of them is the responsibility to keep the Chesapeake Bay clean. Our water here falls into the Chesapeake Bay watershed, so we're very mindful of the effluent from our uh, farm, animal manure, uh, fertilizers in the field, getting into the streams and into the Chesapeake Bay. It feels good because the Chesapeake Bay is like really important and it's really pretty and I really want to be a part of its conservation. Like we want to keep it good so our, the, all the animals in there can survive. For the thousands of people that travel this road every day to look across that bottom and see new fences, that there's not cattle in the streams, uh, that, that the water's clean, uh, it's a great model. It's a great model for agriculture. In addition, the Thomas family added new systems for getting water to cattle in pastures where it wasn't available before. With the new water systems, Glen Owen Farm was able to implement a new pasture management program, which includes rotational grazing. 
We have, over the last couple of years, significantly upgraded our fencing infrastructure to enable a rotational grazing system. This has enabled us to increase the grazable land on the farm. We've increased our herd size to make the farm more productive. We've also seen, by making water more readily available and in better quality, the conception rate of our cattle have improved, both on the AI and on the bulls uh, that are siring calves on the farm. It's certainly in the future going to benefit us, cut down on our workload, cut down on the inputs, cut down on machinery cost. Um, of course, if the cattle have fresh water and green grass and a fence to hold them in, those are three main objectives right there. We're very pleased with what we've accomplished here in the way of our stewardship initiatives. But I can tell you, the more that we invest, the more ideas that we get about future strategies of conservation. The property also provides habitat and safe shelter from urban sprawl for a variety of wildlife. All of the stewardship efforts of the Thomas family help to ensure that the family farming legacy of Glen Owen Farm will continue for future generations. It's been in the family a long, long time, and I heard a saying not long ago that no success without a successor, and I think we've got a lot of successors coming on. It feels good because I know that I'm a part of something much bigger than myself and it's been in my family for a lot of generations and my grandfather and my dad have been working really hard on it and it makes me feel like I'm a big part of something that has been around not just in my lifetime but a long time before that. I view environmental stewardship as both a gift and a responsibility. I look at the farm here at Glen Owen and have a sense of gratitude for my ancestors who've presented this to me. At the same time, I feel a huge responsibility to continue its upkeep, to perpetuate the family ownership, and to ensure the quality of the land for our use and for those around us remains of supreme quality. To learn more about the ESAP program or to see profiles on past winners, just visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD TV. No storm is too powerful for Neopurina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. Join your fellow cattlemen in sizzling hot San Antonio for the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the beef industry's biggest convention, and it's great for education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the NCBA Trade Show for the latest technology. It's the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in sizzling hot San Antonio, Texas, February 4th through 7th. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune. The feeling of snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Are you gonna do this every time we treat a calf with Zuprivo? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, all right then. Don't let BRD interfere with his performance. Treat him as Zuprivo and get him back to his home pen. Zuprivo is a fast-acting, long-lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for Merck Animal Health. Welcome back. Leave the land better than when you found it. That's the motto many cattlemen live by each and every day. And one Montana family is living out their love for the land by taking steps to preserve the natural resources 
on their operation. Reporter Scott Hoke takes us to Montana to introduce us to the Region 5 winner of the Environmental Stewardship Award. It's early morning and cattle are on the move at Bold Ranch in central Montana. For more than three decades, Robert and Annette Bold have been raising cattle and their son Spencer and twin girls Alexandra and Reagan help them run things today. Both Robert and Annette are former teachers who decided to return to their ranching roots. Both Robert and I grew up on a farm ranch, not too far from here, approximately 100 miles probably at the most. I think once ranching is in your blood, it's really hard to get away from it. We run a cow-calf operation. Uh, in the past, we've been predominantly Angus. This is the first year we're doing any crossbreeding away from Angus using Charlet. On the feeder calf side, we do custom feeding. We also grow our own. On the small grain side, we raise wheat and barley. The grain goes into cattle feed. So the barley is a, it's not a cash crop. The wheat is. We're, we're not wheat feeders. We grow cattle. We don't finish cattle here. From the beginning, saline seep has been the biggest challenge for the bulls. Their land contained over 400 acres that was almost unusable because of high salt content. The Bolds fought to reclaim the land by first spreading granular gypsum over the affected area and then seeding a variety of plants that had high salt tolerance. In 1980, uh, we began to do reclamation work here. We didn't know uh, exactly what we were doing because this was the introduction and discovery of technology on how to treat some of these areas. So we experimented with over two dozen grasses, forbs, and legumes to find some that would take. But we've taken this from less than 10% cover to well over 90% cover. And for us, it's become a productive area where you've gone from nothing other than snow white and the dust blowing in the summertime, like in July and August, to this type of a cover. The soil itself, when dad came here, mom and dad came here, it was really poor condition. Uh, and since then, they've done a considerable amount to reclaim it with grasses and mosses and even different farming techniques to reclaim it and it's worked out very well. They've increased their herd by a considerable amount. Managing water is a priority in this part of Montana. No-till farming is one way to retain soil moisture and Bold Ranch was one of the first in central Montana to adopt this conservation practice. They also partnered with NRCS on projects such as installing more than 11 miles of pipeline to supply water to pastures that had never been able to support livestock. They're always willing to investigate and try new techniques and technologies that are out there. When you have a family like the Bold family who tries something new and is willing to work with the producers in the community, it helps get that technology out there to, to test it and make sure it's something that's going to work in our environment. Robert is a, a very forward-thinking um, individual. There's something new out there and he feels that it's beneficial. He is not afraid to try it. And I guess by the same token, neither am I. It's just kind of fun to share the information. If it works for us, it's kind of nice to help somebody else out too. People will call our house and they'll ask for advice and we'll help them any way that we can or we'll give suggestions if we see something going wrong. I always see someone call up and ask my dad, well, what do you think of this? Should I plant this or how did your turtle kale turn out you know what's your opinion on this and he's always just willing to pass on knowledge he just loves to share his whatever he learns the efforts of the bold family haven't just helped the ranch the wildlife here is thriving as well and from crops to cattle water to wildlife the bold family takes whatever steps necessary to be as environmentally sound as possible the environmental stewardship is very important to our family. You can't gain anything from the land unless you keep it up the best that you can. And for future generations, you have to try to keep it the best. I find pride in, in being the fourth generation that we've made it this far and hopefully, hopefully just keep being able to pass it from generation to generation. It's kind of cool to carry on a family legacy. Um, I don't think many families can do that. And so be able to pass it on is just something really special. I think what we've accomplished in the time that we've been here, I'm just really happy with it. We're just a steward here for such a short period of time. 
So you gotta have that goal where you try to leave it so much better than when you got it. If you've done a good job, you've got something to leave the next generation. The Bold family believes in the work NCBA does every day to protect their way of life. Won't you join them as members of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association? There's never been a better time to join. Joining is easy. Just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or you can email us at c 2 c at beef.org. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Whether you're feeding cattle, milking cows, or baling hay, the work on your farm is never done, which is why you need equipment that works as hard as you do. Get the efficiency and versatility you need with Case IH. From farm all compact and utility tractors to balers and mowers, all Case IH equipment is designed with one thing in mind, getting the job done. To learn more, visit caseih.com slash livestock. 10, 11. I'm a 200 to Yes! <laughs> Joe! Todd! How'd you do? Oh! Not bad. See what you have to gain at thelongrangelook.com. It's the official monthly publication of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. The National Cattlemen is produced exclusively for NCBA members and includes coverage of the news and events affecting our industry. Every issue includes market analysis, feature stories, and practical management tips. Start receiving your copy of The National Cattlemen. Call 866-USA-BEEF or go online to beefusa.org and join today. Welcome back. Over the past few weeks, we've been sharing with you stories of cattle ranching families who've gone above and beyond in their efforts to care for the land and to preserve our natural resources. They're all regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award, and we hope you're inspired by their efforts. This time around, we head to Region 6 in Northwest Utah for the story of the Tanner family. In the Grouse Creek Valley of Northwest Utah, the Tanner family is moving their cattle. Brothers Blaine, Jay, and Brent winter their herd in the desert and then trail the cattle up to 9,000 feet in the summer. The Tanner family has been ranching here for 136 years. My great-grandfather Tanner and his brother settled the Grouse Creek area in the mid-1870s. Uh, they initially brought herds of cattle from near Salt Lake City and settled here in the area. One of the things about Della Ranch is that really stands out is the heritage that we have here. Uh, even, the, even in the name Della Ranches, uh, Della comes from our grandparents, Dell and Ella Tanner, who us brothers started our ranching business uh, by purchasing land from them. One of the things that uh, is unique about our ranch is, is uh, you know, we are able to move up and down the valley in the spring and the fall of the year, and uh, we don't have to haul our cattle to our grass. We are, uh, you know, we utilize our grass as we trail our cattle back and forth. Today, the Tanner brothers run about 1,000 cows and grow forage crops in Utah and southern Idaho. Their cattle range across 192,000 acres on a mix of private, state, and federal lands. I think a lot of people think that we're kind of out here on the end of the earth, but that may be one of the qualities that we have is, is by being out here so far. Uh, it is cattle country. It's country that, that's open, uh, that we can, can utilize for our livestock. One major challenge here is controlling invasive species that crowd out grasses and forbs. The Tanners have worked with NRCS and other agencies to clear juniper by first chaining and uprooting the trees and then doing a controlled burn. 
We have found that then it's more successful if we can burn those trees that we've killed. It gets them out of the way, opens up some more area for grasses and forbs and brush, uh, releases some nitrogen back into the soil, and then uh, just makes our, our control last quite a bit longer. The last uh, year or two since we've been able to chain and to do some things with these on these trees, uh, I am in hopes that uh, you know things will be much better there. And just looking at it this year, uh, I see that there's grass coming in places where under them trees there was absolutely nothing. To control sagebrush, the tanners have used chemical treatments to create a more diverse plant community. And the family works with Utah State University to monitor sage grouse and to find ways to improve wildlife habitat. The tanners on their, on their land have done a wonderful job of, of providing that habitat, not just for grouse, but for other wildlife. They are cattlemen, but they are very interested in protecting the habitat for all species. We are finding, especially with the sage grouse and the wildlife in the area, that they need differing ages of brush. And so if you'll go into an area where uh, you've got overgrown or tall brush, all basically the same age, that's not a healthy ecosystem, either for us as domestic livestock grazers or for the wildlife. The Tanner family has also taken steps to protect streams and riparian areas, partnering with the state to install a pipeline to develop spring-fed water troughs. Here, water was a limiting factor. Uh, it's a long ways to water, and so we can get better utilization and more even utilization with the cattle on the land if we put water developments in. Above all, the tanners keep a sharp eye on the health of their rangeland and manage their grass with care. In this area, uh, for us to be able to produce grass for our cows, that's critical. And so it's interesting that the habitat that we create for our cows also is the habitat that many of the wildlife around need. The family has also made the effort to share their stewardship story by opening the Box C Guest Ranch to host visitors interested in learning about life on a working cattle ranch. We have a little guest ranch and we feel like we share a little piece of heaven with, with those that come. But it's worked really well together to you know, have people come and see what's going on, what we do. It's been a positive experience to have guests throughout the world to come and visit us and to answer their questions as to why we do things the way we do them. Whether hosting guests, working to improve rangeland, or protecting water resources, the Tanner family makes stewardship a part of their daily ranch life for the benefit of generations to come. It is a great sense of heritage and there is something that I hope that uh, we can instill upon them the importance of uh, the family and the efforts that uh, our family have uh, made to make this ranch a fifth or sixth generation ranch. This land is certainly suited for cattle ranching, probably better than anything else, and I hope that uh, the cattle industry will provide for our family to be here for many more generations. Grateful for the opportunity that God has given us to live on this earth at this time and live in this great place, and we feel that our stewardship efforts go back to maintaining what we have been given. Nominate your operation or someone you know for an ESAP award. Find out more online by going to cattlemantocattlemen.org. It's the Green Fever sales event. Time to save big on a powerful John Deere 6M or 6R series tractor. Choose any model from 105 to 150 horsepower and get up to $7,000 cash off. Or get 0% financing for 60 months and up to $2,000 off. From field to feedlot, you'll find the right fit in a new 6M or 6R series tractor. Make your move today. Got a friend or family member with a case of Classic Tractor Fever? You can help by ordering them the Classic Tractor Fever Farm Deal. This special set includes both the 2015 Classic Farm Tractors calendar and the companion DVD, Uncommon Classics. It's our biggest and best lineup of tractors ever. That's hours of enjoyment on the wall and on the TV. Just call 1-800-888-8979 or visit the website, ClassicTractors.com.
Welcome back. Each year, NCBA recognizes seven farms and ranches that make environmental stewardship a top priority. 77 Ranch in Blooming Grove, Texas, comes from humble beginnings, but has grown into a large operation that takes pride in everything from their cattle to their grass. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Scott Hoke has more. In the cool of a Texas morning, Gary Price and his son Gary Lee are moving cattle. The 77 Ranch got its start 36 years ago when Gary and Sue Price acquired their first piece of land from a family friend. The ranch uh, actually has been put together through the years. We bought the uh, first piece of property back in uh, 1976 from a good old friend of mine uh, named Lee Lowe. He was an old cowboy friend of mine I met first when I was eight years old and I bought the first piece of property from him when he was beginning to get out of ranching. The 77 Ranch is definitely a family operation. My husband and I and our son Gary Lee. I'm fortunate to be married to a husband that loves his job. Every day he gets up and he can't wait to get out and try to make things better. The 77 Ranch has grown to nearly 2,500 acres today because Gary and Sue acquired it piece by piece their land is in various stages of restoration. Some of these areas that we know are cropped old fields. We've gone back in and we've reseeded those with native grass mixes and forbs. And uh, some areas, uh, all we've had to do is, through our rotational grazing system, be able to, uh, to rest those a little bit and those native grasses. The seed source was there and then they've really responded well. I think of Gary as a restoration specialist. We've been able to buy several different farms that joined us and he could see the possibility that the land had. Range management, uh, my dad, I think that's, uh, he just kind of has a knack for it. Uh, he's a natural at it. One thing he always told me, and I always go back to it and when I'm out there, you take care of your grass and it'll take care of you. Taking care of the grass paid off big in 2011 when the Price family faced extreme drought. There was really nothing green at all throughout the summer, but uh, we were able to get along and not cull anything. And again, we were able to, to wean all of our calves on schedule and precondition those and then sell them and, uh, and improve in market, so that helped. But it just showed us the value of, of range health. I think the main reason they came through that drought strongly was because they left a lot of grass here uh, when things were good and they didn't try to take it all. They didn't try to mine all the nutrients out of the country. Gary and Sue have done a great job to uh, weather through the 2011 drought. They were able to get through the drought without selling any livestock and been able to maintain a pasture rotation and here a year later we're seeing a lot of good responses from our good native uh, grasses. One key to weathering the drought was the big lakes and other water resources Gary and Sue have developed over the years. Those lakes have also added value by providing fishing and duck hunting income, as well as wildlife habitat. What stands out to me is Gary and Sue's knowledge of the land, of the vegetation, of the wildlife, and, and how they make their choices towards managing the land to benefit the wildlife species and also produces a pretty profitable cattle operation at the same time. Another key to improving the forage resources on 77 Ranch is brush control. We like individual plant treatment because we're not disturbing the ground. We've got a lot of good native grass base here that we don't want to go in with a dozer and tear that up. So if we can do individual plant treatment, then we've, we've kept that grass intact and it's worked well for us. You know, Remedy and Diesel are a great product together that can absolutely do a tremendous job on mesquite, and mesquite would be our number one brush problem. The list of conservation projects on 77 Ranch is long. Gary worked with Ducks Unlimited to install a seasonal wetland. Land that once included a washed out gully now produces a crop and turns into a valuable wetland each fall and Gary and Sue share the story of ranching with visitors and school groups. I have a belief that we need to share stewardship with younger people and that's why it's so important to us to open our gates. And We bring out third and fourth graders and uh, bring them out on the land from these urban areas whether it be Dallas 
or even the Blooming Grove kids locally. And they come out and we've tried to connect them to the land through the water that they drink and let them know that their water comes across some ranch somewhere. The long-term future of 77 Ranch looks bright. Gary Lee is currently working on a ranch in West Texas, but the plan is for him to return home and continue the legacy of stewardship his parents have begun. It's great that our son loves ranching as much as we do, and when he takes over someday, we'll be leaving it in very good hands. We like to look at it as we're not trying to conquer this place and conquer this land, but to learn to, to get along with it, see what it's trying to tell us, and to pass it along certainly better than we found it. To see the profiles of other regional winners of the ESAP award, just visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Join your fellow cattlemen in sizzling hot San Antonio for the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the beef industry's biggest convention, and it's great for education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the NCBA Trade Show for the latest technology. It's the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in sizzling hot San Antonio, Texas, February 4th through 7th. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. New Holland is the undisputed leader in hay tools. We give farmers a wide range of innovative equipment that increases efficiency and productivity all year round. Because to us, smart means providing a smooth, clean cut with faster dry down, plug free conditioning and superior bale density. And smart means leaving less hay on the field to feed more livestock in less time. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. For over two decades, the Environmental Stewardship Award Program has been recognizing farms and ranches across the country that strive for excellence when it comes to protecting the land. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Scott Hoke tells us about the dedication one California operation has to responsible environmental practices. Jack and Bev Sparrick work side by side in the care of their cattle and their land. Sparrick Livestock is a first generation outfit that Jack started in 1964. Now they move their cattle between four ranch locations in California and Southern Oregon. For us, it works a lot better to go from winter range in the San Joaquin Valley of California to summer range in the, in the high country. Uh, we don't have to do any farming, we don't have to raise any hay. It's a good place to raise cattle just because of the kind of forage that we have here and uh, the fact that we're able to use it as a summer grazing operation along with a winter grazing operation in California. And the grasses here are very strong. The cattle do, do real well. Sparrick Livestock operates on about 85,000 acres with a mix of owned, leased, and forest service lands. One area of focus is restoring streams. To do so, they've built rock check dams, carefully timed the grazing of riparian areas, re-established native willows, and more. One thing that we've done is we put in a lot of off-stream watering system, a lot of solar, solar pumps, and uh, redistributed the water away from the sensitive areas, away from the creeks. We find that the cattle would rather travel a ways to go drink out of a clean water trough then climb down a stream bank to get a drink out of the creek. This is a great nesting area for wildlife habitat um, and it just protects the whole riparian area here around the water base. We have seen better water quality, better wa water quantity. Uh, the streams instead of being deep wide streams are beginning to become deep narrow streams but deep water wise not deep bank wise and that's our goal. Jack and Bev work with a variety of conservation partners to restore streams, control invasive juniper trees, and improve fish and wildlife habitat. The upland habitats, 
are improving both where we've done the juniper projects and, and outside of those. It's a, it's a change in a more structured cattle management scenario that's actually benefiting the wildlife populations. They also pay close attention to the condition of their rangeland, rotating cattle frequently so the grass has time to put out new growth. When you come right down to it, what we're doing is marketing our grass, our forage through cattle. I mean, if we don't have good grass and clean water, we're not going to have very, very productive livestock. They're conscientious grazers, don't just dump the cows and leave them. They are, uh, have deferred grazing in certain fields uh, that are where they know that there's ground nesting birds. The upland game birds, uh, they need the, the insects, they need the seeds, and they need open areas that are grazed to be able to forage. So it's a win-win for both wildlife and for the livestock grazing. Perhaps most impressive, Jack and Bev and their partners in the Bar One Ranch led the way in California's Sierra Valley by putting in place a conservation easement. We put a conservation easement on that ranch in 2002. We were the first ranch in the valley to do that. Since then, several of our neighbors have have done the same thing. We had development potential, subdivision potential on that ranch as it's only 35 miles from downtown Reno. We're in the cattle business. Uh, we're not in the development business. There was a subdivision map on that ranch for over 700 homes and we just didn't have a vision of having 700 homes on that kind of good rangeland. The ranch like this, it's a little over 13,000 acres is preserved uh, uh, forever and, and it will always be a ranch and it be left in open space and, uh, and as well as a ranch and, and habitat. With one ranch protected, the Sparrix then helped found the Oregon Rangeland Trust and placed an easement on their Drews Valley Ranch. Now two ranches in two states totaling more than 24,000 acres are under permanent protection. For Jack and Bev, that means their legacy and love of the land will live on. Bev and I are both uh, deeply concerned about caring for these ranches and, and our stewardship programs and uh, we like what we're doing, we like the way it's working for us and we encourage our neighbors to do the same thing. It does give us a good feeling to know that they'll remain cattle ranches. That's what's near and dear to our hearts and hopefully will be a good potential for our family down the road to stay in the cattle business. I love ranching. I love the cattle business. The worst thing I could think of would be get up in the morning with nothing to do. And by the same token, uh, when I'm gone to the wild blue yonder, I'm expecting my children and grandchildren to be involved in running these ranches the same way. To learn more about all of this year's regional ESAP winners or to see stories about past winners, just log on to our website at cattleman cattleman.org. Over the next few weeks, we're getting to know each of the regional winners of this year's Environmental Stewardship Award Program. Today, we head to Louisiana and spend a day in the life with a Region 2 winner of this prestigious award. On a steamy summer morning, cattle graze through the long leaf pines in the savannas of southwest Louisiana. This is Daigle Farms, home to Dave and Mary Ann Daigle and their daughter, Clara. Daigle Farms has is, is been in existence since 1983, but you know, my family were all cattle people from uh, Acadian people from down east that actually settled on the tall grass prairie. I like it because you're able to see the trees and the woods and, and uh, the cows grazing. I see the impact of what he's been doing and how it has improved our pastures. We try to manage from a business viewpoint with a concept known as integrated resource management, which means we identify everything that's out here that has a value, and we make a conscious effort to develop those values. When it comes to this environment, Dave Daigle knows his stuff. By education, he's an environmental scientist, and he worked for the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality. 
His early career was in the oil fields, but he always had a farm like this in mind. There's nothing more beautiful than a good slick haired, shiny Brayford, you know, cow out there on the range that's robust and, and the calf is strong. It's just a real joy to see it. With more than 1,100 acres, Daigle Farms has a mix of income sources, including their Brahmin and Brayford cow herd, high quality timber, and Dave is in demand as a consultant to those interested in restoring these now rare longleaf pine savannas. Some of the tracks that we have were actually clear cut lands that had been in tree farm situations before. And we reintroduced longleaf pines into that system in a natural spacing and setting. Since starting his farm in 1983, Dave has made steady progress in improving his land with the use of prescribed burning and cattle grazing. David has done an outstanding job of utilizing all the tools that were historically accurate in these longleaf pine savannah systems. He uses fire at the proper time. He uses grazing management because herbivory and fire are both tools used to keep this area open. So just his vast knowledge of this ecosystem and how to properly use the tools to manage it makes him stand out among cattlemen here. I think if, if somebody was at all curious about blending ecosystem management in with cattle grazing, this would be a, an excellent field trip to make to one of Mr. Daigle's sites because they can see what's possible. They can see where, where fire will get you and where this rotational grazing will get you and, and the type of timber management. You can get multiple resources, multiple benefits on the same tract of land. Dave works closely with a number of partners, including NRCS, on projects such as installing ponds to improve water access and rotational grazing. And since his farm normally gets about 55 inches of rain each year, adding heavy use areas around gates and water troughs has provided real value. Our heavy use areas work well here because traditionally we do have rains. We're in a drought um, currently, but during heavy rainfall seasons, cattle and tend to make a pretty nasty hole around the troughs, and the heavy use area was designed to get those cattle up off the ground. Now those pads have been tremendous. We built a limestone base according to NRCS's is specs, and. Uh, we just really, really would have never known w without their technical support just how beneficial those things are. Dave also battles the Chinese tallow tree, an exotic species that crowds out natural habitat. He uses a mix of fire and chemical treatments to control this invasive tree. Normally we use a basal spray spot treatment throughout the landscape. Remedy works really well uh, in an oil base. We spray the bottom one foot of the tree all the way around, and we feel like we get something very near to 100% kill of that seed tree, you know, and its roots. Daigle Farms is home to a diverse array of rare and endangered plants, and Dave has worked with wildlife agencies to create habitat for the endangered red cockaded woodpecker. I'm a sincere believer that, you know, that I can graze cattle here, that I can maintain diversity, and I can manage it you know, right there where a red cockaded woodpecker lives. Whether it's sharing ideas with others, managing timber lands, or working with the cow herd, it's clear Dave Daigle and his family have a passion for life and for their land. To me, that's what God intended for him to do was to be on the land. He didn't uh, intend for David to be have an office job, I, I guess you'd say. He, he's, he's happier being on the land with his cows. You know, it adds a level of a quality of life that no business plan can incorporate. There's not a day that goes by, not a one, that, that we don't marvel at the wonders of nature here. Now you can see stories about all of this year's regional winners by visiting cattleman cattleman.org. Stay with us, our good friend Baxter Black is up next. To stay up to date on beef industry news and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, check out beefusa.org. You'll find news on both the Federation of State Beef Councils and the work of NCBA on Capitol Hill. 
plus link to NCBA programs like the blog, Beltway Beef, updates on the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and the latest from NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Connect today at BeefUSA.org. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right, where it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real and feeding my family a home-cooked meal. That's important to me. That's important to me. Planting the garden and watching it grow. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. You know, it takes a lot of jobs on a ranch to keep it running smooth. The cowboys are in the spotlight in real life, just like they are in the movies, unless the boss is around. The rancher and his daughter often have good parts. The mechanic who makes sure the hay and equipment, the trucks, tractors, and assorted motors are maintained and fixed gets a little publicity. Even the cook gets to say a few lines. But who greases the windmills? keeps the garden and feeds the cat and drives the oldest pickup and generally does what nobody else wants to do. When they put him on the payroll, all the cowboys wondered why. Because he didn't own a saddle, couldn't rope and didn't try. So they gave him all the bad jobs, the ones that they'd put off and went about their business leaving him to clean the trough and irrigate and fix the fence and chop the thistle down. And when they all ran out of beer, it was him that went to town. He handled all the details the cowboys would ignore that held the place together, kept the wolves back from the door. And they only saw him now and then at night when they'd come in because things were running awful smooth and they were busy men. Well, nobody ever noticed that he always did his part until the day the windmill froze and the pickup wouldn't start. And the coyotes got the chickens and the butane tank went dry. The milk cow tore the barn down and the mechanic's wife got high. Nobody stoked the wood stove or started up a fire. So the cook refused him breakfast and threatened to retire. The dogs tore up the smokehouse like they'd hit it with a bomb, and the ranch ground to a standstill. And the cowboy said, where's Tom? Seems they'd really never thought about how much they'd miss his face. Finally hit him on the day the hired man quit the place. This is Baxter Black from out there. To truck guys, the truck is everything. And when you put them in charge of making an unbeatable truck, good things happen. This is the Ram 1500. 
the 2014 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. And first ever back-to-back -back winner. Guts, glory, ram. This business can take time away and become more of your family than your actual family. My days were tough. I had a lot of doctoring, a lot of pulling. Now our days on the feed yard are happy days. It's more about looking at the cattle and enjoying what we're producing versus the alternative which is pull and treat and bang our head against the wall. We have never wavered from Draxon. We've seen the benefits just keep getting better and better. I'm an NCBA member because NCBA, they look at the facts, they look at the history, and they look what's good for the industry. It's important to be NCBA members just because of what NCBA does. They keep us informed about a lot of things that are going on nationwide. The reason we're an NCBA member is we think that it's the best voice that the cattle people have. Join NCBA today. Head to BeefUSA.org or call 866-USA-BEEF. Welcome back. This week's legacy photos come to us from Sparrick Livestock, the region's six winners of this year's Environmental Stewardship Award. Let's take a look. Send us pictures from your farmer ranch by visiting our website at cattleman to cattleman.org. Well, that does it for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.